Hey there, welcome back to our Summer Song series. We are gonna go back to 1966 now, and we're gonna feel groovy with this next song. Um, this is the 59th Street Bridge song, also known as Feeling Groovy, um, written by Paul Simon and performed by Simon and Garfunkel. Great tune, highly recommend you take a listen to it. And the greatest thing for us musicians is that you can play it with pretty much just three chords. I know Paul Simon is a super amazing songwriter and does a lot of intricate stuff on his guitar on this one, but for you, if you just wanna feel groovy with three chords, you can do it. Um, and those three chords are gonna be in the key of G, so let's zoom you in and review what those chords are. All right, 59th Street Bridge Song, otherwise known as Feeling Groovy, only has three chords for us. I'm so excited about this, and they come in a really interesting package. So we're in the key of G, so I've got my pointer finger, my root chord G, my pointer finger is on the second fret of C, bring my middle finger over to the second fret of A, and then I squeeze that ring finger in between there on the third fret of E. Sounds like this, right? Now I'm gonna start this song actually on the C chord, and to get from G to C, all I have to do is take my ring finger where it is on that third fret of the E string, hop it over to the third fret of the A string, and take the other fingers off completely, and now I've got my C chord. That's just important because we're gonna go from the C chord right back to the G chord. So I'm gonna basically do that in reverse now. I'm gonna put my pointer and my middle down on the second fret of C and A respectively, scooch that ring finger back over to the third fret of the E string, and then I've got my G. And this is where it gets really fun because now from G, I'm gonna to go to D7. Now normally, my D7, I would play with my middle and my ring here. I'd move them all the way over here. The middle is gonna be on the second fret of G. Ring finger is going to be on the second fret of E. Uh, but I think in this case, because we're here on the G chord and we're going back and forth, I'm gonna take my pointer and my middle and move them over one string each. So my pointer is gonna take that second fret of G and my middle is going to take that second fret of E. So it sounds kind of like that. Um, and that's gonna be great because when we go from that D7 back to G, all I have to do is hop that shape over Pointer now comes to the C string, middle comes to the A string, still on the second fret, pop that ring finger back down, and I've got my G. So the formation altogether that we're gonna be working with is C to G to D7 and back to G. And this is a really cool exercise to do even just without any strumming. It's sort of like your fingers are a little spider that are walking along the fretboard and getting used to those chords. It's a really great exercise. And that's the only progression, not only the only chords, but the only progression you're going to need for this song. All right, now here's my favorite part of explaining this song. Usually at this point I talk about, well, here's the verse and here's the chorus, maybe here's the bridge where we do something different. All you need to know is one progression that repeats over and over and over in this song. It's awesome. And it goes like this. Even though we're in the key of G, we're gonna actually start our pattern on the C chord. Then we're gonna go to G. Then we're gonna go to D7. Back to G. Start it all again. C to G to D7 and back to G. Now, um, I mentioned that uh, you can play the D7. I am a, out of my creature of habit. I play it with my middle and ring finger here. But in this case, since you're going back and forth between G and D7, you can just use that pointer and middle if you like. I, can, I have a little bit of a harder time with that. I'm not as used to it. But some people may find that a little bit more easy. Um, and likewise, when you go to C, all you have to do is move that ring finger over. So it's a really nice, um, it's not only a song, but it's like a great little exercise for your fingers to move in similar shapes up and down the strings. As a teacher, I always geek out about that stuff. So use it as an exercise for that. It's always wonderful to have that opportunity. So with those chords, if you're new to the key of G, just focus on the chords. Don't worry about any strumming, right? We're gonna do um, two beats for each chord. And so if you're new to it, you may just stick with single strums. One, two, or sorry, we'll start on C. One, two, to G, two, D7, back to G, over to C, back to G, over to D7, and back to G. And that may be your biggest challenge right now, which is great. You could just stick with that through the whole thing. When you're ready to take it to the next level, you might try two strums per chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then when you're ready,
ready for a challenge after that, you can add a little upstrum to it, a little swing, like this. brand new to strum patterns and to the strum, the swing strum, I recommend you go check out um, a series of videos that I made about those strum patterns where you can really get uh, more deeply into them and then come back to this one. Um, so let's give it a go. I don't think we even really need to break it down too much. I just think we need to play through the song. So we're going to do it right here, uh, right now, starting on that C. We'll warm up a little bit and then we'll add the words. One, two, starting on C. One, two, to G to D7, back to G, C, G7, or sorry, G, D7, to G. You'd think it's so simple, Avery. Keep going. One more time, to C, G, D7. Here's verse one. Slow down, you move too fast. They do some really cool vocal work at the end of that that you can experiment with. But if you're just working on those chords, this is such a great one you can sing over and over and over again. And as I sometimes like to do, just write your own verse to it, right? That can always be a fun challenge as well. So feel free to go back and use whatever part of this video is helpful to you. Um, always make sure though that you take some time away from the video and just try playing it on your own so you can really get a chance to hear that song inside your head and make it from, in from the inside out, as I like to say. So enjoy your practice. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.